All right, and let's start, as I just mentioned there, with the G20 summit. It formally started in Hamburg, Germany, earlier today. The German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, welcomed 19 world leaders to the two-day meeting before kicking off the event with an appeal to member states to seek compromise in disputes over trade, climate change and migration. Merkel also sent a signal that the summit may not resolve all of its disagreements at this event, but nonetheless leaders must continue to work to find resolutions. On the sidelines of that summit, President Trump and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin met face to face for the first time since Mr. Trump took office. Here's what they had to say after their two hour meeting. President Putin and I have been discussing various things and I think it's going very well. We've had some very, very good talks. We're going to have a talk now and obviously that will continue. But we look forward to a lot of very positive things happening for Russia, for the United States, and for everybody concerned. And it's an honor to be with you. Your Excellency, Mr. President, we spoke over the phone with you several times on very important bilateral and international issues. Well, a phone conversation is never enough. So if we want to have a positive result through bilaterals, we must be able to resolve the most acute international problems and issues. And I'm delighted to be able to meet you personally, Mr. President. And I hope that, as you have said, our meeting will yield positive results. Right, then let's get the latest details from Hamburg. Natalie Carney joins us now live from the port city with the latest from the G20 summit. Uh, Natalie, what's the latest? What should we look forward to, to tomorrow as well? Well, just some of the highlights from today. Angela Merkel addressed the press uh, just as the closing uh, of today's uh, discussions were underway, saying that the group of 20 had a very difficult discussion on the issue of trade, and in particular, the uh, overcapacity of steel exports, and said that that was going to be a, pr uh, a priority in the next 24 hours of negotiations in regards uh, to the area of trade. No agreement uh, in the area of in the environment was neither reached today. A very contentious issue, of course, following Trump's withdrawal from many uh, climate change commitments. Uh, China says, though, that it will not sign any environmental protection uh, communique in the G20 if it does exclude the U.S. So, again, it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes forward, particularly with Trump's point of view on the issue. As you've mentioned as well, Trump and Putin did sit face to face for their first time as leaders together. Uh, so that also produced some very interesting interesting results and of course protests uh, did continue outside of the venue across the city of Hamburg with over 160 police officers being injured and 40 people uh, being arrested. Tomorrow what we are expecting is a G20 to discuss more about their uh, partnership with the African continent and how it can uh, help with sustainable development and help to mitigate the, uh, the migration issue uh, from the continent. As well President Xi is expected to meet with the U.S. President uh, Donald Trump again some very contentious issues going into that meeting and protesters have also agreed to carry on with their fight with a hundred thousand man strong demonstration to close off the g20 here in hamburg Saturday. indeed and of course uh, that that meeting between the russian and the american presidents incidentally also overlapped with the start of the g20 session on climate change policy as well uh, let's dig a little more into that though how did the meeting between the two men go especially after mr trump's comments barely 24 hours ago on russian aggression in the baltics Absolutely. I mean, going into this meeting, uh, there was no denying that, uh, at least visually to the media and to the outside world, there seemed to be a lot of tensions between U.S. and uh, Russian uh, in the U.S.-Russia relationship. Uh, of course, there's the issue of Syria. Both hold uh, opposing views. There's the issue of the Ukraine. Uh, and as well, too, the U.S. has been uh, accusing Russia of meddling in uh, U.S. elections last year in 2016. So uh, everyone had big eyes on on this meeting and uh, as you've mentioned it was slated for only to be only 30 minutes the two leaders spoke for two hours coming out of that meeting which only ended about 45 minutes ago uh, Putin said that the two leaders had spoken about the Ukraine as well as Syria and other bilateral issues uh, according to Rex Tillerson the Secretary of State of the United States uh, said that they had very robust exchange on the issue of Russian meddling uh, in the US election so those are all the details we have at this moment but the big news sort of 
related to this discussion was that U.S. and Russian officials uh, were able to reach an agreement on a ceasefire in southwestern Syria uh, that will begin on Sunday around noon. Now, this is very, very instrumental uh, in the, uh, the Syrian conflict due to the fact that it uh, presents a much more active role for the United States uh, in that regard uh, and as well brings those two parties together who, again, hold opposing views on the issue. So uh, that'll be a very interesting aspect to watch. Indeed, lots of things to look forward to. Uh, let's get back to something you mentioned a little earlier, though. Uh, the United States threatening to restrict the importation of steel from other uh, parties, mostly the EU and China as well. Let's focus on the EU. What form would the EU's response to that sort of restriction take? This move by the Trump administration is really being seen as sort of its first solid move towards protectionism. And many countries have uh, spoken outwardly about uh, their concerns of Donald Trump's sort of uh, desire to isolate the U.S. economy. But I think this particular uh, tariff on steel is much more focused towards China, uh, should we say, who actually supplies 24 percent of the global export uh, of, of steel. Um, so. And that's because of subsidies by the, the Chinese government. So that undermines uh, American prices, thereby that's the justification Donald Trump is giving. Now, this, of course, will also affect the European Union, who also exports steel to the United States. Um, but it's very difficult at this point to really see how, what sort of response the EU might give to this, being that uh, the China has only responded with uh, quote unquote disappointment uh, on the, uh, the, 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 the comments or the announcement that it could, the U.S. could potentially uh, put forward these tariffs. And with all this talk of sort of a free trade global economy, it's very unlikely that the EU is going to sort of respond in kind, so to speak, and place tariffs on the U.S. So it's a very complicated uh, aspect of these trade discussions and again, as Angela Merkel mentioned, very difficult uh, discussions uh, on trade in general. Indeed, we'll leave it there for the time being. Natalie Carney there live in Hamburg, Germany. She'll, of course, be part of the team bringing you the latest details from the G20 summit today and, of course, tomorrow as well.